in late 2009, I felt mature. I was 29. And I saved like some capital, started from nothing. I saved like, it's, 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 it's embarrassing to say, but I saved like 20,000 USD. And I said to myself, okay, what's now? I have a lot of money. Welcome to 20 Minute Leaders. Just sit back, relax, and learn from the leaders of today. It's a journey. Each one is different, unique, inspiring. Let's get started. This episode is powered by Jay Ventures, a community-driven VC fund in Silicon Valley in partnership with Leomitech, sponsored by Homeward Ventures, Hippo Insurance, Opus Labs, Synergy Global, Hillel at Stanford, Leap, Birthright Excel, Serona Partners, and in media partnership with C-Tech. Welcome to 20 Minute Leaders. Let's talk about personalized robots. Meet Yossi Wolf, co-founder and chairman of Temi. Yossi is the chairman and co-founder of Temi, the personal robot, with 15 years of experience in the field of robotics and unmanned vehicles. After serving the Special Forces as an officer, Wolf partnered with Alad Levy to build Roboteam Defense. Today, hundreds of Roboteam's robots are in daily practice, saving lives around the globe. In 2016, Yossi left the defense company for his dream initiative, Temi, to set to shake up the market of personal robotics. Temi is a premium-designed, video-oriented, autonomous personal robot platform for businesses and homes. Recently, Temi has been selected by Time Magazine for Inventions of the Year 2019. Yossi Wolf, thank you for joining me on 20 Minute Leaders. How are you? Thank you, Mike. This is a pleasure. I'm fine. Thank you. Thank you very, very much for being here. Yossi, um, let's, let's talk about consumer robotics. Let's, let's find, you know, what's happening in the industry today and both understand your own, you know, journey within robotics. This is not the first company that you're building in this, in this sector. Uh, but now, you know, we're looking at, at a changing world. The way we interact with technology is emerging in various ways. And, you know, you're, you're looking at a way of, you know, interacting with technology in the physical world, not just in the software world, which is incredibly exciting and looking at, at robots as personal assistance. And so, so Yossi, tell me a little bit about yourself and, you know, your journey into robotics, and then we'll talk about this industry as a whole. Okay, pleasure. So uh, I, I'm like 20 years in the business of robotics. I mean, the practical, you know, revenue-based business of robotics, which is unique because you see many robots, you know, on YouTube, but you don't see many robots in the real world. And I will explain why. Robotics is like probably the most advanced technology. It's a mix of everything. It's a Lego of, of you know, the, the human limits in technologies. You have, you know, optics, AI, control, cloud, uh, safety, mechanics, hardware. You have it all. And, 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 and human, you know, is looking for robots from, from, from the day of, of the PC invention. So it's like, from one side, you know, the imagina- imagination is there. You know, you want to have a robot. You know, humanity wants a robot. And from the other side, you don't have robots. Especially, you mm-hmm. don't have robots that interact with humans. So you have some, right. you know, vacuum cleaners. You have some industrial robots that are connected to the, you know, to the concrete floor and they assemble cars. But you don't have robots like you envision to have robots. And I decided right. to meet this, you know, holy grail of the challenges, the the Everest of the challenges. And you should be a bit crazy uh, to do that. It sounds like it. All all the big companies uh, historically failed. Like Google acquired like 10 robotic companies in 2016 and failed. Amazon Robotics is not there yet. You know, in warehousing, yes, but no human in the loop. Once you have a human in the loop, it's a whole different story. Uh, You know, not to mention the big boys. And and just lately, you know, Tesla is talking about robotics. You know, Elon Musk revealed, you know, the service robot that is going to come. So I think that what is so unique about robotics is that human being, you know, they want it. And just (laughs) in the last two years, probably, you have the enablers. The enablers are there, you know. Yeah, the, so the I hardware. think that that speaks to you know my question. Okay, so why why didn't it work? Why did why didn't the ten companies at Google buy? Why didn't they succeed? You know, we're only talking about five years ago, twenty sixteen. What's happening in the market? 
I think that, you know, this is exponential, you know, developments of technology. Robotics is not a robot. You know, a robot definition is, is, is very fluid. It's, it's philo- philosophical question. Your, your, your wash machine, you know, and your, your fridge there is also kind of a robot. So it, it doesn't matter the, the definition. What, what matters is that the technology is super advanced. Super advanced. Mm-hmm. What happened in the last two years is that the AI uh, is coming big time. The cloud technologies, you know, are there. And today you can put, you know, endless amount of algorithms, literally endless, on the cloud. And you can have a robot device, which is more like an IoT device, which is more like just, you know, the, the, the end unit. And then you can right. get, you know, very high performances. For example, you can talk with a robot. A robot can navigate, you know, based on its cloud algorithms, meaning the price is getting much lower and the software, you know, got much higher. Uh, The communication infrastructures became much better, you know, with 4G and 5G and high speed Wi-Fi, which enabling, you know, the robot to work in real time world. And you, as a human, mm. you used to work in a real-time world. You know, you have your own natural speed and you have your own, you know, things. So I think that right. these are the enablers for uh, robotics. Of course, it's thanks to the smartphone. So you have, you know, the internet, you have smartphones, and next is probably movement because we are moving creatures. Mm. So once you're adding the movement, you, add, you, you, you get a concert. You get a you right. get a concert, and 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 this is this is a huge challenge. Today we do see thousands of robots that are coming in different sectors. Right. So you'll see, you're sitting there and you're saying, you know what? I'm going to do this. I'm going to I'm going to create this consumer product that is going to allow humans to have movement with their technology, and and we have all these enablers that we just talked about, and it's going to be great. What do you do then? How do you even start thinking about, okay, how is this going to look? How is it going to feel? How is it going to interact? How do I sell this to consumers, right? How do you go about thinking about all these things? First of all, I think it's pretty natural. It's more like, you know, from, I would say, from life science than than exact science. But I give you, you know, a short story of, of the process. So, you know, I've been in the Israeli Air Force Special Forces for six years. I've been a, a, a company commander. Um, then I studied physics and philosophy in Tel Aviv University, which always I was interested about, you know, what is going on in this world. Just like to wonder. In parallel, as a student, uh, I, I met a girl in a bar and she told me about her father and her father, you know, he used to have like a, a small startup company for electro optics. I had no idea about, you know, nothing. And I started to work there instead of, you know, serving uh, hamburgers in a Tel Aviv restaurant. I started to work there as a very low, you know, level student. And uh, very quickly, I just, I just fell in love in, in development. In R&D, you know, wow. R&D for a guy like me, it's like a playground. You, you can do, you know, so many things. The challenges are there. It makes the, the quality of connections with your colleagues very strong because once the challenge is big, then uh, you see, you know, the right, you know, personnel and the right uh, team uh, that you can achieve these challenges and you cannot do it with anyone. And it makes the, your time in life just, you know, amazing and, and exciting. So I, I literally fell in love in, in, in development. And uh, very quickly, I became a VP in this company for robotics. And we started to do some things with, with robots, but it was like in 2007, 8. Uh, wow. The technology was very limited. And uh, in late 2009, I felt mature. I was 29 and I saved like some capital started from nothing. I saved like, it's, 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 it's embarrassing to say, but I saved like 20,000 USD and I said to myself, okay, what's now? I have a lot of money. So me and my co-founder, uh, Ilad Levy, we decided to invest it all, all in, no option to fail. 
no money from from home, no support, uh, into a company that will do robotics. And, and we just were, you know, kids that were thinking that if the internet is so successful in 2009, so for sure the next thing will be, you know, 3D, will be physical world, will be movement. Right. And we both were so excited about it and we just, you know, put a list of robots. You know, robots for agriculture, robots for defense, robots for elderly people, robots for education. And, uh, and, 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 and we did it, you know, we just, we just, I, I quit a job with a very high salary of a, of a, you know, VP. And I put all of my money into a small company named Roboteam. Now today, Roboteam <laughs> is probably the number one, not Tammy, Roboteam. It's my, my, my first company probably the number one company in the world for life-saving robots. Uh, we generated more than, you know, 100 million US dollars in, in sales. We, we, we provided thousands of systems that are saving lives today all around the world. Like we are Incredible. the robotic company of, of Israel. We are one of the providers, prime contractors of the US Pentagon. Like two guys from nothing, we literally were sitting at, at my partner's grandmother apartment to save the rent. We became a prime provider to the U.S. Pentagon. And that was my high school. So my high school was working with the U.S. Pentagon, literally. And wow. the mix, you know, the classic mix of special forces and curiosity and, and, and energy endless. Uh, I, we became kind of experts for uh, robotics that can fight the Hamas in Gaza, that can go into the tunnels, that can go over the borders, that can carry weight to our friends. And you know, we live in a tough neighborhood. So every time and then that was a big operation, you know, Lebanon and all this shit that I, I don't like it at all. But that was my, our way to help. And it was perfect Incredible. because it was not only a way to help. It was only a way to make money. It was also a way to have responsibility over more than 100 employees. It was many things. Mm -hmm. and, and for me, it was just perfect. Unbelievable. Uh, well, 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 doing that with Roboteam, uh, after six years of being the CEO and VP r and uh, and again, I'm a very curious guy, so, you know, I was excited working and learning how the big industries are working, Elbit and, and this and Raphael and, and Lockheed Martin and, and everything. And I, I was spending many hours at, 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 the, at the Pentagon uh, for, for a guy with a very Israeli English, you know, and, uh, culture, I became like, a um, uh, uh, expert for, uh, robotics in, uh, in the defense. So I, I, then I decided that it was enough for me after six years. And I, I'm still a main shareholder over there and a founder and a di director, but I, 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 I had a vision that I would like to have a bigger impact. Like the impact, when you work with governments, you work with usually a single organization, you know, in each country. Uh, I wanted to work with everyone. And one day I went to visit my dear grandmother at the time, may she rest in peace. And, 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 and I felt very connected to her. Always. And she, she was, you know, spoiling me and she was serving tea and cookies and food. And she was 85 years old. And suddenly she was 100% fine cognitive wise, but she was shaking, you know. And it was, you know, hurtful to see. And I went down to the store and I bought a, a walking device, you know. And she said, no way, this is, this is a product for old people. I hate it. Take it away. So I said, okay, okay. Uh, would you like to have a robot? She said, yes, that's cool. And that's where my market wow. research ended, literally. And I decided to devote my life into this project. 
I knew wow. that this is the almost impossible project because so many companies tried to do that before and failed. And, you know, jumping on, I succeeded to raise close to 100 million US dollars into this, you know, vision of helping to elderly people with a robot device. Um, today, uh, the name is Temi. Um, Temi Robot today uh, became more than that. It became like more like the iPhone of robotics. It became like a platform that you can use and customize to different use cases in many sectors. The number one use is for elderly people assistant and for remote care, but there are many more. And along the process, working with my grandmother, we decided to make it cool. We decided to make it, you know, if we, if I want it, it's, it's okay. If I, I don't, I, if I don't want it, no. So, so that's why the Temi design is superb and it's black and it's, you know, state of the art. It's a, it's the best of the best in software. And that's, that's what happened. Fortunately, at the time, I met uh, Mr. John Wu, who was the first investor in Alibaba and the uh, yes. co-founder of Alibaba and the CTO in the first 10 years. And he came to Israel and, he, and I met him for five minutes and uh, I told him the same story that I'm telling to you. And he said, Yossi, let's do that. Let's take your know-how from the defense and let's establish, you know, a commercial company. Uh, Robotemi, and I will open for you Asia. And he invested within two weeks. I heard they're big into week. robots, Asia. Yeah. yeah. And for me, again, as a curious, you know, uh, child, China was closed. When you walk in the defense, there is no China. China is like Iran for the Americans. Yep. But for me, it was so exciting. Suddenly, all of Asia was open for me, and they are much more excited from hardware in general, but from my robots ideas, uh, the acceptance was very high. Uh, I, I, I fell in love in the culture and the, the speed and the energy, and I started to visit the big factories. And, and the price of Temi Robot, for example, is the price of the box of a defense robot. So it's a different world of components and, and standards and whatever you want. So it was super exciting for me. And I decided to relocate a, a few guys, the best of the best from Tel Aviv to China. Five years ago, wow. and we opened Temi China and we have today 80 Chinese employees that are managing thousands of, you know, assembly employees in Shenzhen, which is like the Chinese Silicon Valley. Uh, and it, this is very unique. This is a very unique story. We have uh, the mother company is Tel Aviv, which I'm leading. And we have uh, subsidiaries, both in China and the US. And I don't know many companies that succeeded to penetrate both markets. So we have thousands wow. of robots today in China, in Chinese, in their cloud, in their world, which is like, you know, being on Mars. And you have wow. the West world, which is a different world, working in, in all over Europe and in the US markets as well. And we are the small Israelis, we are in between, uh, managing the whole, you know, product and the roadmap of the product. So, so that's, that's in a nutshell, you know, my, my story. I, I'm, I'm passionate about robots uh, in, in many fields and many aspects. It's only the beginning. Uh, there are maybe four to five companies today on the world level that sells, you know, thousands of robots uh, with what we call men in the loop, service robots in the indoor environment. We are the only one from the West. All of them are Chinese because, you know, many reasons we not talk about it, but, but we are a very, very unique Israeli company that made it big in hardware. 
by by understanding the challenge and by relocating the best guys to include a CEO to China to manage wow. the operation from there. Unbelievable. You'll see. I think that the it's not just a story of, you know, entrepreneurship and business, but it's a story of, you know, of an entrepreneur that is solving a problem that they have to solve. And uh, you said a sentence before that really touched me with that you're dedicating your life to this. This is not, you know, your second company. This is not another business that you're running. This is a life mission. And, and it obviously, I'm sure that it translates to your conversation with John Wu and, and, and his willingness to, to jump in on this uh, and, and, and devote both massive capital, but also, I'm sure, time and energy and, and you know, emotional energy and, and getting the best people around you to, to go on this journey. And, and at the end, penetrating, you know, the two biggest markets in the world for this and, uh, and doing so in, in a way that, you know, that actually works. And, and having those robots deployed and, and, and sent over. And I think that it's a, it's, it's a fantastic story and very inspiring for young entrepreneurs. So thank you very, very much for sharing with me. And thank you for spending this time with me. Thank you for these 20 minutes. And, uh, and I wish you really the best of luck with Tammy. And I can't wait to, to have one of those robots for myself as well one day. Uh, and, uh, and thank you very much. Thank you, Mike. It was a pleasure.